Oh, dude. Should we have to check that off I don't, know if it, if, I don't know if that's an option. Um, All right. We are Meister Shaney. Aleph Vav. Um, I'm sorry, Aleph Vav, right. If one brought cattle in error, the money must be returned. If wittingly, he must go up and be eaten in the place. But that when, the, when there is no temple, it must be buried together with the hide. One may not buy bondsmen, bondswomen, land, or unclean animals with my Sashani money, and if he bought, he must eat for its equivalent. One may not offer bird offerings of men or women who had a, a flocks, or bird offerings of women after childbirth, or sin offerings and guilt offerings bought with my Sashani money, and if one offered them, he must eat their equivalent. This is the general rule. If anything other than food, drink, or ugament has been brought with my Sashani money, its must, value must be consumed. Maisa Shani serves for eating, drinking, and uh, um, anointing. For eating what is usually eaten and for anointing that which is usual to anoint. One may not use for anointing wine or vinegar, but one may anoint with oil. One may not spice Maisa Shani oil, nor may one buy spiced oil with Maisa Shani money. However, one may spice wine. If honey or spice fell into it and it increased its value, the increased value is according to its proportion. If fish was cooked with Maisa Shani leek and it increased in value, the increased value is according to the proportion. If Maishashani dough was baked and increased in value, the increased value is attributed to Maishashani. This is the general principle. When the increase is recognizable, the increase is according to its proportion. And when it, the increase is not recognizable, the increase belongs to Maishashani. Okay. All right. All right. Now, um, Rabbi Shimon Omer, Ein Sachin Shemen Shalmase Sheni Birushalayim, Bechachami Matirin. So, uh, actually, it's a question as to whether why, why he mentions Birushalayim, because uh, it, it seems redundant because anything that you do with Masse Sheni has to be in Yerushalayim anyway. Um, but Rabbi Shimon seems to disagree. He, he disagrees with the, uh, with the with the view that we've already stated, that oil, you, that you're permitted to rub oil on, on your body. He says it has to be for eating or drinking. Okay. okay? Not for, and not for anointing. Amru um, Rabbi Shimon. Hold on, Rabbi Shimon. They say, come on, you've got to, you know, let's, let's be reasonable about this. Im heikel truma chamura. Look at truma. A coin is allowed to take truma oil and rub it on his body. And truma is something that's, that's much more machmir than Maaseh Shani because only Kohanim are allowed to eat it. Okay? Um, so, so, why, so if, if, so if uh, truma is, if we see is more machmir than, than Maaseh Shani, so, and, we, and we're allowed to rub truma oil onto, a, a Kohen is allowed to rub truma oil onto his body, so why shouldn't you be allowed to take uh, Maaseh Shani oil and rub it on? No nekel ba Maaseh Shani akal. Amar lahem, says Rabbi Shimon, na, I can... Uh, I can slag up your kalva chomer. Why? Ma ma lo im hekel bitchuma chamura, ma kum shehekel be karshinim of a tiltan. In in truma we have uh, we have kulas with uh, with vetches and with fenugreek, mm -hmm. which we're going to see in the coming mishnayos. Na kel be maase sheni hakal. So we're going to be making with uh, with a so-called uh, with a so-called lenient. We see that uh, and uh, and uh, and fenugreek we're actually more strict with than with uh, than with truma. And without talking further about it, let's go straight into the Mishnah that described the the halachas of fenugreek and and vetches. So Mishnah Gemel tiltan shall masasheni. Excuse me. Before you go on, there's a comment, a commentary about why the, Rabbi Shimon uses the word Yerushalayim in here. Right. So, okay. Uh, go ahead. Let's let's hear it. So I'll try to shorten it a little bit. We have adopted Rashi's interpretation, followed by its commentary, its commentators, uh, Batanora to Fred Israel. However, according to the Rambam, the above does not account for our mission's reference to in Yerushalayim. It might have simply stated that Shimon says. One may not anoint oneself with Maisa Shani, or Maisa Shani may not be used for anointing. Accordingly, Rabbi Shimon agrees that Maisa Shani may be used for anointing, and thus his restriction in our Mishnah refers to asking one's fellow in Yerushalayim to anoint him with Maisa Shani oil, and be rewarded for the, by the anointment of his own palms, since one may not profit from Maisa Shani money. So, uh -huh. but, so I don't know if that helps with what you were Yeah, asking. yeah, so that, so that helps, that actually gives another, uh, that, that, that gives another touch on it, that, that, um, that's, if he says, "Listen, you 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 rub 
the master shiny oil on me it's my master shiny oil just drop it on my back i can't reach but then and as your reward you get the master shiny on your palms mm -hmm. because you've been using them to rub uh, to to rub so okay yeah so so he says that so it says, says rabbi shimon that's us sir and uh say Chachamim, that would be permitted when if you, you wanted to yeah you said rub his back I, I i didn't think the anointing was like that rubbing the whole you know body or whatever i thought it was a different maybe i'm different i'm different well, why does he why does he need somebody else to rub him somewhere where he can reach that's true <laughs> that that is true i just i i think of the anointing of like the kohen you know the kahanam and uh that kind of anointing no, so that that that's on your head then no, this I, is this is a this is a skin a skin tonic right okay and so it's it's, it's just like uh you know um suntan lotion yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. I got it. Okay. Okay. So Mishnah Gimel, tilt onto Master Shani. So when you have fenugreek of Master Shani, te'achel tzimchonim, not tzimchonim, which means that when it is still, uh, still, still young and soft. Okay. Um, and that's when it, that's when it's properly edible. But if it gets older and and dries out, then it's no longer edible. Okay. And so, so tilton of truma. The fenugreek that's of truma, you're allowed to leave it until it until, uh, until it dries, um, and then they could use it for for shampoo. Apparently, it's a it's one of these uh, special ingredients in in you know the right uh, designer shampoo. You use fenugreek in it, um, and kohanim would be allowed to that that would be a valid use for for fenugreek uh, for kohanim. But masheshani they machmir and they don't they don't it's only allowed to be eaten. Uh -huh. So now this is so this is the point that Rabbi Shimon makes is that uh, actually um, we all agree on the salacha of fenugreek that fenugreek of Masishani must be eaten but for but for uh, for kohanim for truma fenugreek can be uh, can be used in a shampoo. Okay, v'shel truma be'shama yomrim kol maaseha betara. Okay, so now on to, on, so since we're talking about uh, about fenugreek and truma, we see machlok is between Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. Beis Shammai say that everything must be done with tahara. You're not allowed to, not allowed to get a tame chutz me chafifasa until you actually start rubbing it into your hair. In which case, you don't really care if it's uh, it, 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 whether it's uh, tame or not because it, it's not um, at this point. It's no longer edible. Beis Hillel omrim kol maseh betuma chutz mishriyasa. Everything can be done if you're preparing the if you're preparing this fenugreek for shampoo. You froze. You're frozen. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I, this happens like every day. I don't know why the the thing freezes like this. Okay. You got to the point that said when they're preparing the um, the fenugreek food for shampoo. Right. So when they so when they're preparing the fenugreek for shampoo, uh, Beishama says um, everything has to be done but the tara until he actually does the shampooing over the hair. Mm -hmm. Okay. But still, I'll say no. One, everything can be done by batuma. Except for the the soaking, the, the initial soaking when it when it gets wet, because you can't deliberately make the make this tumor tame with your hands. As soon as you wet it, that's when it becomes susceptible to tumor, mm -hmm. right? So that that basically I'll agree, you can't deliberately uh, make it tame. But once it's uh, once it's been soaked, um, and it's going to be, and, and from there on, it's going to be used for uh, for shampoo. Then there's no need to be particular about it. Um, there's no need to be particular about the uh tuma. okay okay uh mishnah dalit now we move on to vetches now vetches are the that's this plant that's uh mostly used for cattle fodder mm -hmm. but can in a pinch be eaten by humans uh so also they may be eaten as if it's master shani it can be eaten as as a young plant because that's when it's still fit for human consumption but it can be taken into Yerushalayim if it's Masishani, it can be taken in and it can be taken out, which is a which is a cooler that it does not apply to other 
other produce because it's generally used for cattle um we don't we're not much fit that it has to that once it comes into Yerushalayim it's not allowed to go out again um let's just see why since it's not um it, it's only human food in a, in a in a real pinch um but it's only but you're only allowed to take them out temporarily for example uh, County right. points out, yeah. You don't have to take them out temporarily. Uh, for example, to uh, to prepare them for food or to grind them or to make into uh, into into dough or what's it? What is right. satan to for baking? He says for baking. For baking, right? Uh, and then afterwards to return them to eat in Yerushalayim, but to eat them in Yerushalayim even for for veggies is asar. Okay. Now, what happens if they become tame? So Rabbi Tarfan says, okay, so then break them up into pieces smaller than a kibetza and mix and mix them up because if it's less than a kibetza, it can't transmit tumor. Chachamim omrim yipadu. Nah, redeem it. You can, since it's, since it's tame, you can you can redeem it onto, onto other money and that becomes Master Shani money and then you can buy something else with it. Okay. The shell tumor, however, if it's, uh, if it's tumor, um, so we'll come back to the same sort of question as we had in the previous mission about the preparation of truma, uh, of truma vetches. It's mostly going to be cattle fodder. And Beis Shama, I say, everything has to be done in, uh, in Tara, uh, the, the rubbing and the, and the crunching, uh, 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 separating out the, the grains um, must be given um, in... I must be done but the but tara but when you feed it to the animals in the last step then he then he can be tame but only the shore the shria the only the soaking in water has to be done but tara because that's where the hachshara happens but since it's then be designated for animal fodder there's no need to keep it tower but Shammai himself is more machmir than his than his uh, than his talmidim. He says it has to be eaten dry. In other words, don't get them wet at all, so that he should never so that he should never come to be matame them. Right. Okay. Rabbi Akiva Omer Kolma saying betuma, and Rabbi Akiva says, forget it. Once it's all, once it's going to be fed to the animals anyway, just uh, you, even soaking them, there's no need to be particular about keeping it sour. Okay. Okay, good. Um, now, good. okay, Master test. From a vine which is planted in the courtyard, one may, one may take the whole cluster, likewise with a pomegranate and likewise with a melon. So is Rev, this is Rev Tarfin. Rev Akiva says that he may pluck the grapes from the clusters and pick the seeds from the pomegranate and cut slices from the melon. From coriander sown in the courtyard, one may pluck leaf by leaf and eat, but go together he's liable. Savory, hyssop, and thyme, and thyme in the courtyard, if guarded, are liable. If a fig tree stands in the courtyard and overhangs a garden, one may eat in his usual manner and is exempt. But if he stands in the garden and overhangs the courtyard, he may eat one by one and is exempt. But if he took together, he is liable. If he stands in the land and overhangs and overhangs outside the land, outside the land and overhangs the land, all follows the root. As regards houses of walled cities, all follows the root. But as regards cities of refuge, all follows the branches. And in Yerushalayim, all follow the branches. If one pickles, stews, or salts in the field, he is liable. If one stores in the ground, he is exempt. If one dips in the field, he is exempt. If one bruises olives so that they may, um, so the acrid sap may come out of them, he's exempt. If one squeezes olives into his, onto his flesh, he's exempt. If he squeezes them and put them into his hand, he's liable. If one skims into a cooked dish, he's exempt. But into a pot, he's liable because it is regarded as a small vat. Okay. Trimo Stalad Yudalef. Here we go. Um, wait a second. Is this the wrong place? It's uh, what you say, you Dalit, right? Uh, you're Aleph. Dalit, you're Aleph. Oh, okay. I'm my mind is not working as usual. 
If a saw of truma um, fell on top of a stored pile and he skimmed it off, the Eliezer says, if there are a hundred saws in the layer skim, it becomes annulled in a hundred and one. But Rabbi Yeshua says, it does not become annulled. If a saw of truma fell on top of a stored pile, he must skim it off. If so, why did they say truma is annulled in a hundred and one? It is not known whether it has become mixed up or whether it has fallen. If there were two baskets or two piles and a saw of tumor fell into one of them and it is not known into which it fell, they combine to annul it. Reb Shimon says, even if they are in two towns, they combine to annul. If um, Reb Yossi says, a case came once before Rabbi Akiva concerning 50 bundles of vegetables into which a kindred one, one had fallen half of which was Truma, and I said in his presence, and I, it is annulled, not because Truma is annulled in 51, but because they were there 102 halves. All right. Okay. My, hand, Zion base. my hand was exactly where we were supposed to start, and I'm looking at it, and it just didn't register. <laughs> nothing registers with me anymore. All right. Um, Zion, Zion um, bet. If an olive tree standing among three rows of two rectangles was forgotten, it is not shikacha. If an olive tree which contains two saws was forgotten, it is not shikacha. When does this apply? When he had not begun. But if he had begun, even as a netofa, olive in his time, and he forgot it, it was shikacha. As long as he has under it, he has on, I'm sorry, as long as he has under it, he has at its top. Remeya says from the time the uh, machaba is gone. <laughs> which is parrot which falls off at the time of the vintage if while a person was harvesting he cut the cluster by its stalk it became entangled by the leaves it fell from his hand to the ground and was separated then this belongs to the owner if he sets down the basket under the vine while he's harvesting then he robs the poor of him it has been said remove not the landmark of those who come up which is oleli which uh, whatever has neither kataf or nightaf if he has kataf or nataf to the owner if there is a doubt to the poor, all it in the joint, all it in the joint. If it is snipped off with a cluster, then it belongs to the owner. If not, then it belongs to the poor. A single berry, Rabbi Yehuda says, cluster, but the sages say, all it. Now, who supervises all this to see where it was cut and see what goes on? No, there's nobody supervising it. You, the, 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 the pickers themselves have to be the experts in the halacha. All right, so, so they, they have to they have to be trained as to what's a, what's an odelis and say this is this cluster over here must be left to the aniyim. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gimel Dalid. Yeah. A boil or burn is tame for no more than one week unless it has one of these two symptoms: white hair or expansion. With white hair, either initially at the end of the week or after the nega was declared tahor. With expansion at the end of a week or after the nega was declared tahor. If, he, if, he, if they can be tame for one week, which equals seven days. The sakam are, confi are confined, tame for as long as two weeks, and with two symptoms, they are confirmed tame. Deficient blonde hair or expansion. With deficient blonde hair, either initially at the end of the first week, at the end of the second week, or after the nega was declared tahor. With expansion, either at the end of the first week or at the end of the second week, or after the nega was declared tahor. They can become confined tame for two weeks, which equals 13 days. The gayim that appear on a Caracas or on a Gabacas are confined tummy for as long as two weeks, and with two symptoms, they are confirmed tummy. Living skin or expansion. With living skin, either initially at the end of the first week but at, and at the, uh, at the end of the second week. After the nega was declared tahor with expansion, either at the end of the first week, at the end of the second week, or after the nega was declared tahor, they can become confined tummy for two weeks, which equals 13 days. And Avos. Okay. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai received the tradition from Hillel and Shammai. And he used to say, if you have studied much Torah, do not take credit for yourself because that is the purpose for which you were created. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai had five disciples. They were Rabbi Eliezer ben Harkonnes, Rabbi Yeshua ben Kananya, Rabbi Yossi the Kohen, Rabbi Shimon ben Nasanyol, and Rabbi Elazar ben Arach. He used to enumerate their praises. Rabbi Eliezer ben Harkonos, I can't get this now. Harkonos is like a cemented, Harkonos is like a cemented cistern that does not lose a drop. Rabbi Yeshua ben Kananya, fortunate is she who bore him. Rabbi Yossi the Kohen is a scrupulous, pious person. 
Reb Shimon ben Nisanyu fears sin, and Reb Elazar ben Arak is like a spring flowing stronger and stronger. He used to say, if all the sages of Israel were on one pan of a balance scale, and Reb Eliezer ben Harkonnes were on the other, he would outweigh them all. Abishul said in Rabban and Yochanan's name, if all the sages of Israel, with even Reb Eliezer ben Harkonnes among them, were on one pan of a balance scale, and Reb Eliezer ben Arak on the other, he would outweigh them all. He said to his five disciples, go out and discern what is the proper path to which a man should cling. Reb Eliezer, El- Eliezer said, a good eye. Reb Yeshua says, a good friend. Reb Yossi says, a good neighbor. Reb Shimon says, one who considers the outcome of a deed. Reb Eliezer says, a good heart. Um, uh, he, Reb Yochanan ben Zakkai, said to them, I prefer the words of Reb Eliezer ben Arak to your words, for your words are included in his words. He said to them, go out and discern what is the evil path from which a man should distance himself Reb Eliezer says, an evil eye. Reb Yeshua said, a bad friend. Reb Yossi says, a bad neighbor. Reb Shimon says, one who borrows and does not repay. One who borrows from, from man is like one who borrows from the, uh, from the omnipresent. As it is said, the wicked one borrows and does not pay, while the righteous one is gracious and gives. Reb Eliezer says, a wicked heart. He said to them, I prefer the words of Eliezer and Arak to your words, for his words are included in his words. Your words are included in his words. They each said three things. Reb Eliezer, Eliezer says, Let your fellow's honor be as dear to you as your own, and do not anger easily and repent one day before your death. Warm yourself opposite the fire of the sages. Be, beware of their glowing coal, lest you become scorched, for their bite is the bite of a fox. Their sting is the sting of a scorpion. The hiss is the hiss of a serpent. And all their words are like fiery coals. Okay. Mm-hmm. By the way, the, 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 it's, that sounds like four things that he said. But uh, we said that that one of them is uh, the first one is actually the first two are actually one. May your, that your friend's honor should be as dear to you as your own, and don't be f- fast to anger, because right. that's one thing. Right. Be right. fast to anger is about your uh, is about your friend's honor. Okay, and um, we, Yavamos, uh, just hey. Just hey. If the daughter of Israel married a Kohen, she may eat truma. If she if she he died and she has a child by him she may eat truma. If she then married a, a levi she may eat the tithe. If he died and has a child by him, she has a child by him she may eat the tithe. If she then married a yisrael she may not eat truma or the tithe. If he died and she has a child by him she, uh, she may not eat truma or the tithe. If a child by the yisrael died she may eat the tithe. If a child by the levi died she may eat truma. If her child by the Kohen died, she may not eat truma on the tide. The question is, if the child of the Israel died, she may go back to eating. The she tide? goes back to her previous. Uh, she goes back to her previous husband's child. This ah. is the status of her previous. So whoever the latest child is is the, is is her current status. That status, okay. Yeah. All right. And Mishnah is basically the same thing. If the daughter of a Kohen married a Yisrael, she may not eat truma. If he died and she has a child by him, she may not eat truma. If she then married a Levi and she may eat, she may eat the tide. And if he died and she has a child by him, she may eat the tide. If she then married a Kohen, she may eat truma. If he died and she has a child by him, she may eat truma. If her child by the Kohen died, she may not eat truma. If her child by the Levi died and he, she may not eat the tide. If her child by the Israel died, she refer, returns to her father's house. Concerning this, it was said, she returns to her father's house as her youth, and she may eat from her father's bread. A woman whose husband went overseas and came to, and they came and told her, your husband died, and she married, and afterwards her husband came back, she must leave both of them. And if she needs to receive a bill of divorce from each, she receives neither the kasuba, nor the payment for the fruits, nor sustenance, nor warm property from either. If she took prop payment from either, she must return it. A child by either is a mamzer. Neither of uh, neither of them may contaminate himself to her, and neither has rights to her found objects or to the pro- pro- products of her labor. If the nullification of her vows, or the nullification of her vows, if she was the daughter of Israel, she is disqualified from marrying into the priesthood. If the daughter of a levi, she is disqualified from eating the tithe, and if she is the daughter of a kohen, she is disqualified from eating truma. The heirs. Uh, of both men do not inherit the Ketubah. If they should die, the brother of each performs Kalitza, but not Yibam. 
Rabbi Yossi says her ketubah claim is on the first husband's property. If Elazar says the first one has the rights to her found objects, the products of her labor and the nullification of her vows, Rabbi Shimon says cohabitation or kalitza with the first one's brother, the least is a co-wife, and she and her child by him is not a mamzer. If she marries without sanc- sanction of, of the court, she may return to him. So what does it mean, in Misa, if she married without sanction of the court? Why should that make it easier? If married without sanction of the court means that, uh, that she had two Adam. Mm-hmm. Previously, we, 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 she, the court permitted her to marry because there was one aid. We have a big heter with, uh, with our gunas that we allow her to remarry on the testimony of one witness. But she, she must know that if, the, she, that, that if this witness is disproved and, if, and her husband comes back, she's going to be in huge stock, as this, as this uh, Mishnah tells us, which means that she has to be 100% confident that her husband really is dead. Right. Okay, but if it comes with two witnesses, how are you going to do any better than two witnesses? So once you've got two witnesses that her husband is dead, she doesn't need permission of the court. Uh, okay. That's what's uh, in um, Shiloh then, Yashos. Um, then we're saying that, uh, that, that she's... Uh, uh, um, then she's allowed to return her to her first husband because that's a complete honest. And the, and the second Nisoyen just it wasn't, wasn't a Nisoyen at all. Okay. Um, but the Halakha follows the Tanakama and all these things and whether she's... Um, this, so this was, this was the opinion of, of Rabbi Shimon over here. And the Halakha doesn't follow him. The, the, the Tanakama says it doesn't matter whether she got married Alpi based in or whether she got married Alpi uh, two witnesses. Um, she um, she has to get the get divorced from both of them, and all of these all of these sanctions on her apply. Thanks. Okay. Have a great um, day. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're not going to have shear. I've got to, I've got a, a work function which I need to leave early for. Okay. All right. And I have on Wednesday. I have a technician coming sometime between eight and ten. So you know that could be twelve then. I don't. Know. <laughs> but I might have to just cut short. Were you able to hear me? Sure, you froze again. You froze. Okay, so then I will open up my other, open up my other computer. Can you hear me now? I hear you now, but um, what I said was that oh, wait, um, wait, now I, I've now I can't hear on this one. You can't hear me. Are you muted now? No, I'm not. Okay, that's fine. All right. What I said was on Wednesday. Um, I have a technician coming between eight and ten. Which means you could also come at one. So I right. <laughs> but uh, it's supposed to be eight to ten, and and uh, so if we once we start, if he's not here, then we can continue and, and go. Um, but if he comes, I have to stop in the middle. So just in right. the middle. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you very much. Have a good Thank day. you.